Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Map Maker, the Gerrymandering Game. And in the game, I would normally give you a brief description, but I like the way this is written, so I'm going to read it for you anyway. You belong to a political party, Republican, Democrat, Libertarian, or the Green Party. Your only job is to make sure the party wins the next election. You get to redraw the districts, but so do the other map makers. You need to scramble to draw the best lines first. Can you crack and pack the voters? Can you scheme and strategize? Can you create unfair, lopsided, strangely shaped districts that will guarantee your party's victory. It's a fast to learn, exciting blah 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 blah. That is the basic idea of the game though. You're going to be basically choosing a party, getting all of the uh, chits for the party, placing them down the map along with everybody else's face down, shuffling them up, and then drawing lines that are going to equate to different districts. And the districts are going to be lopsided and crazy, but you need to have a certain amount of people in each district in order for it to be considered one. And then whoever has the most districts at the end of the game is going to be the winner. Let's go into the game and the components. Here are the game components for the game Map Maker, the gerrymandering game, and as you can see, each player is going to get their own color along with their own party. You're also going to get one of these little tokens here, because there's always going to be one space on the board depending on the number of players. The board is set up for two, three, and four players depending on the colors here. Basically the board is going to get bigger depending with, with more and more players, and the outsiding, uh, outside of the board is going to be uh, basically the lines drawn for the dis different districts. So what you're going to do is you're going to select uh, one of the different areas, one of the different characters here along with taking these things here and these things are going to be used for whenever you conquer a district and finally you're going to have these and these are basically what you're going to be using to redraw all the districts you're going to be taking a certain amount of actions for per turn and simply placing them down the board to kind of make your own district and that's the basic idea what you're going to be getting in it let's go ahead and talk about how the turns work pretty simple though so I'll show you the setup below, as well as everything that's going to be uh, done in order to get the game all set up. And we'll play a three-player game so you can see how the borders work. But on your turn, it's very, very, very simple. You're going to take four of these little I guess, uh, black logs and our voting district lines, and you're going to be placing down, them down on the board. You have to connect them uh, from other different pieces, and you're going to, uh, can, you can play them anywhere you want, provided they connect to different pieces here on the board. But you're trying to make districts, draw districts, and you want to get at least four districts attached to each other. If you can enclose four districts, you're going to get that location, uh, provided that uh, if it's a big area, maybe it's a six area, you're not able to cut it in half, then that would actually be a full district as well. You would score that area, and your opponent's going to get to do the same thing. The only difference is on the first turn, if you're the first player, you get one, second player gets two, third player gets three, fourth player gets four of these, and then everybody starts taking four actions or four of these tokens per turn. It's very similar to the game that you're basically drawing the lines to make the squared boxes to write your initials in. It's an old game that you used to play in elementary school. This one's just take it up a notch. Let's go ahead and check out the game on the setup and how to play a couple turns. So we went ahead and set up for three different players, and as you can see, there's the two-player board, and then the extra colors for the three-player board, and the final color at the very edge is for four players. When you're playing three players, however, these portions here are all the border of the game, and so you cannot go past them, you cannot place uh, past them like that, like you would normally be able to do in a four-player game, and these are also, we also be borders in a four-player game. So the, this is basically the border in this case. All right, so that's the basic idea of that. Everybody's going to have their tokens here, you're going to turn them all face down like we did shuffle them all up face down and then put them all on the board and flip them face up there will be one space extra left over and you're going to simply put that zero cube there that counts for nobody everybody else's should be random and there's going to be different numbers anywhere from two all the way to ten and they're going to be put around the entire board and so the idea is you're going to want to try and encapsulate at least four locations and if you can do that you're going to be able to score so for instance here if I wanted to, uh, let's see, this is the right here. Maybe I wanted to do something like this. I'll just show you what, what one of the places would look like. This would be a completely blocked off area right here. And there's one, two, three, and uh, there's five here, which means that this is, is at least four, and you can't break it up into another section of four. So this person would then, we would tally it up. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 blue, three red, and seven green. In this case, blue would actually take this and put it down. That would secure the entire area of the board for that player. That's basically how these sections work. You never need to put down on the border lines. You don't need to put down blacks on borders of the board because they're already considered borders themselves. So uh, you're gonna set these 
side uh, for every player. So every ha ha player has the ability to get these. In a three-player game, let's just say uh, the Democrats wanted to go first, they would simply start with one of these, the next player would get two, the next player would get three, and then from then on out, everybody's going to get four. So the blue player may choose to place, he's looking at them on the board, and remember, he needs to have the majority of numbers of Democratic citizens in, in a given location uh, of, of at least four in order to score that space. And whoever has the most spaces scored at the end of the game is the winner. So he might play something along the lines of like right here. He also wants to steal just a couple of everybody else's to remove them from being able to get the spaces. The next player is gonna take these two here. Maybe he'll place it like this and uh, so on and so forth. The next player has got three here. And of course he's red, so maybe he wants to jump in. So he's gonna actually move them over here to increase the amount of red spaces. Uh, then the next player is going to get four of them. Now everybody's actually going to get four for every turn following this. And the game is going to continue. Blue's still going to want to try and gather the most traffic here. So he's going to do something like this, maybe. And let's see. How about... we gotta get, we got to stop that red. So we're going to block that off, actually. So that's going to cut the red out of the area. And the next player's going to go, and green's like, well, in that case, I don't want blue to actually secure any of my stuff. So I'm going to place these here. One, two, three and four. So giving blue all of his pieces as opposed to trying to steal some of green's pieces. He'll get this area most likely, but it won't be because of green. It won't be, it won't be green's pieces get, getting lost. And then we got red over here. Maybe red wants to score some stuff, so he'll start securing it by going over here this way. And the game's going to continue just playing like that uh, until somebody's going to score. So for instance, here, that is going to block off an area. These are the border lines here. 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20, 23 points. And unfortunately, uh, there's no other colors in here for blue to mess around with. But he does get the location. It is a blocked off location of at least four. And it cannot be uh, it cannot be made into another section of four. And they just place a donkey there. That's one location for blue. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to go ahead and have green go. And green's going to go one and two and three. And you notice green is actually trying to get a little bit of red in here and four there. And then red, red realizes that he's like, uh Oh, I don't, I don't want that to happen. How can I, how can I stop that from happening? Um, so maybe we can do this one and two and three and four. And the game's going to continue like that. And as, as these places get locked in, you're going to be counting them up. Whoever has the most total is going to get that area. And once all of the board has been secured in one way or another, you're going to tally up these are these points. They're these locations on the board. Whoever has the most filled in locations is going to be the winner of the game. Map Maker, the gerrymandering game. Let's come up and talk about it. All right, a couple caveats for Map Maker, the gerrymandering game. Now, the first thing is I was just taking off the queue or taking off the pieces and putting down, of course, the Democratic uh, donkey, or of course, any of the other ones in order to secure a location, you actually are supposed to leave them on there because in case of a tie, you're going to be A, checking out these ones and zeros, which are basically swing states and whoever, swing areas, and whoever controls the most of those is going to be the winner. But also if there's an extra tie, you would check whoever has the least amount of votes in each of their secured areas and whoever uh, does that, it's also the next tie breaker up. So basically leaving those on there will secure the area. I just like it because it's a little cleaner when I remove all the pieces and just shows my, my certain symbol on there. But either way. That's the basic idea, right? You're simply going to be trying to draw lines around the districts to secure your votes in that area. You're kind of manipulating the public by trying to say, okay, well, uh, in this area, there's a gajillion Republicans. And this area, there's like 50 Democrats and 40 uh, Republicans. So I'm going to give them that all, all that area is going to go to the Republicans. And I'll also include this little bit here. Um, so that way I can secure this area here and that's, that'll count as one and this will count as one and it'll be fair But it's really really not right and the game does a really good job of that If you've never heard of how gerrymandering works. It actually is implemented very well in this game It also has a nostalgia feel from that old game Like I was saying before that you play where you're drawing the lines and to make the cubes whenever you get make a cube You get to draw a new line you write your initial in and there's a whole big grid You guys probably know what I'm talking about if you're around my age and you maybe even even a little younger uh, Just play, playing that little cube game trying to collect all the cubes. This is the same kind of functionality, but in turn, you're also adding in a big theme, which really does work very well, and also trying to secure in the districts uh, with a, a bit of strategy. You want to try and take as many votes from your opponents as they can, as you can, without them actually securing the area. And if you could do that, it really, really messes with people. Now, of course, there's uh, flaws to that, I suppose. Like, first of all, if you have two players in the, out of the three, uh, manipulating one of the players, unfortunately, going back and forth, just taking all of his little areas up. Poor little guy 
isn't going to secure a lot of areas, and it turns into kind of a 2v2 game. However, that player has to try and re-manipulate back if, if, if he wants to have a chance at winning, and try and secure uh, the best votes that he possibly can. Everybody has an opportunity of winning, and I recommend this game at a 4-player or a 2-player level, because that's when it really gets hectic and crazy, and you're really drawing the party lines, and it incorporates the entire board, and it also shows the black lines, so you can see exactly where you want to place down all those, uh, place down all the, the voting lines, basically. And also utilizing the 10s and the 9s and the 8s over utilizing the 2s and the 4s. You want to suck other players' pieces up. It works well. The theme is great. The game is great. It's nostalgic. I really had a good time with this game. The components are, of course, prototype quality, so I can't guarantee what they're going to look like later, but I would like to see them looking nice, and I'd like to see maybe some donkey meeples or some uh, porcupine meeples included when you place them down in the territories. Uh, overall, though, this is an excellent game. I really, really had a good time with it, and I, maybe it's because of the nostalgia factor, maybe it's because I really enjoyed the party lines and manipulation of the theme that worked really, really well. As far as the political aspect, anybody can play this game. It has no bias in any way. It's just playing with the different parties, securing the locations, and doing your best. And no matter what, I had a good time playing it with all the players, but two and four is my favorite. Otherwise, though, it is up to you to decide if you want to back the game Map Maker, the gerrymandering game. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like the game gerrymandering, go ahead and check it out on Kickstarter in the description below. Oh, it's, it's, it's fun. I really enjoy it. I, I, it might be nostalgia, but when I was playing I, like over and over again, I was just like, ah, I love putting these pieces down. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've had the blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're currently giving away the game Flanks, and we're also giving away the game Gloomhaven, both uh, pretty cool games. Gloomhaven is a big popular one. You guys can go ahead and check that out on our site. You can also go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. they got tons of good stuff as well. I think Rising Sun is getting given out by the uh, Everything Board Games. They have some blog posts that might be interested in as well. Well, I guess that's all I got for you this time. As always, I look forward to trying to draw lines to manipulate the economy and the populace next time.